So when FDR comes into office in March of 1933, he's got to deal with a banking system that is in shambles. People are taking out their savings because they don't trust the banks. A third of the banks have shut their doors, have collapsed. So what FDR first has to do is to prop up the banks. The next thing he's got to do is prop up the agricultural economy because agriculture is where the vast majority of unemployment is. Once FDR gets the banking system set up, he deals with the two fundamental sectors of the American economy, business and agriculture. And agriculture is dealt with with the Agricultural Adjustment Act because it's the issues of overproduction and underconsumption. So FDR says to the farmers, listen, we got to control overproduction, which means that you can't use all of your land. But the government wants to help you and not penalize you for doing this. So if you take 10% of your land out of cultivation, if you leave it fallow, then the government will pay you 10% of what you made last year to help make up for that loss. So once FDR deals with the farm economy, he's got to deal with big business and small business. The legislation is the National Industrial Recovery Act, the NIRA. It sets up the NRA, the National Recovery Administration. Now, instead of saying, okay, take 10% of your business aside and we'll pay you, they set up a gazillion codes, price codes and wage codes. And if you adhered to it, you got this great blue eagle that you put in your window as this great government seal that says, we do our part. You know, and what are you doing? What is your part? By 1935, the economy is back to where it was in 1929. It's back to where it was when the stock market crashed. But the stock market is not the beginning of the Great Depression. It's when the Great Depression hit the middle class. And so what FDR realizes in 1935 is that he has to take additional steps to deal with these crises. Because the big overarching programs, the Agricultural Adjustment Act, the National Recovery Administration, are not dealing with the problems in as comprehensive and widespread way as FDR wants. So how does FDR navigate this? Well, he's got a great Democratic majority in 1934 because the Democrats really come back and take over Congress. So he's got to capitalize on this goodwill. He's got to address his critics. And he's got to address the American people to get them involved. FDR is getting ready to present all of this legislation in 1935. And it's this together that's collectively known as the Second New Deal. And so when FDR begins to do this, he understands how to talk. He can talk to the American people without being condescending. Whenever FDR was on the radio, as many people listened to FDR as listened to Amos and Andy, which is the most popular show on the radio. It is a remarkable study in power and in conversation. It's not a press conference. It's more like a graduate tutorial to the American public on how relief policy is going to work and the extents, the limits, and successes that his early policies have put into play. He talks about how far they've come, but clearly there's much more to do.